I thought it would be useful to review some of the blogs and posts which are going on at the moment, um, particularly those with a Russian-Ukrainian bias, because the ongoing conflict between Russia and Ukraine has seen a series of dramatic developments that have shaken the geopolitical landscape, uh, particularly as Ukraine continues to make gains that challenge Russia's military strategy and public perception. And the reports that suggest Ukraine may have captured a significant Russian command post, uh, which has come out in the last half an hour or so, marks a notable shift in the dynamic of the war. Of course, the whole problem with the area in Kursk is that no journalists are allowed on either side. So Russia's response to Ukraine's advances, particularly in regions like Kursk, has been marked by a mix of denial and strategic disarray. According to the sources, Russian forces have been retreating or being pushed back in several areas. There have been photographs on the front page of the newspapers today of Russian troops blindfolded being taken into captivity, with Ukraine making steady, albeit cautious, progress. This has led to significant concerns within Russia, as some reports suggest that the Kremlin might have had prior knowledge of these potential incursions, but chose to downplay the threats. This denial is emblematic of a broader issue within the Russian government and military leadership where the harsh realities of the battlefield are often obscured by state-controlled media narratives. A former Russian lawmaker even suggested that the military was aware of Ukrainian plans to target Kursk, but was instructed by higher authorities not to panic, reflecting a dangerous overconfidence or refusal to confront the situation head-on. The public reaction in Russia to these developments has been carefully managed through a combination of state propaganda and censorship. So again, we're not really sure what we're seeing. The Kremlin has increasingly cracked down on independent media and social platforms like YouTube, which hardly exists now, can't get through, attempting to control the narrative and prevent widespread public awareness of the deteriorating military situation. But of course, it doesn't stop the YouTube trolls from participating in Western YouTube. Um, th this strategy of restricting information appears to be faltering as more information is leaking out through various channels, including social media, telegram, and international m news outlets. The irony, as some commentators have noticed, is that while the Russian government is focused on banning content and restricting access to information, it seems less effective in stopping Ukrainian advances on the ground. This has had the sense of cognitive dissonance among the Russian public, many of whom are unaware of the full scale of the conflict, the full scale of the invasion, or are in a state of denial about Russia's military struggles. It, it's quite extraordinary. It's as if the entire campaign, the special military exercise, is designed for domestic consumption rather than designed to attack Ukraine. It's, it's, rather, like, it's rather like conspiracy theories that... Um, uh, that the, um, the, the the Apollo moon landing never happened, that it was all staged. The, the Ukraine invasion was all staged for domestic consumption. But of course, we know it isn't staged. We know Russian troops have inflicted appalling casualties on Ukraine. To what purpose? So Ukraine's capture of a Russian command post is particularly interesting as it indicates a serious breach in Russian defences and command structures. Command posts are critical to military operations, serving as hubs for strategic decision-making and coordination, and of course they will have extraordinary information there. The loss of such a post suggests that Ukrainian forces are not only advancing, but are also disrupting and infiltrating the organisational backbone of Russian military efforts in the region. And if they can get to one bit of the backbone, they actually, presumably, access the whole lot. So the success also highlights the effectiveness of Ukraine's military strategy, which has been characterised by targeted strikes and psychological operations aimed at destabilising Russian forces. And if the aim was to access the Russian high command system, then, you know, they've got that. That is a remarkable achievement. It's, it's on a par with, the, with breaking the Enigma code. The ability to command to capture a command post suggests that Ukrainian forces are gaining momentum and may continue to push deeper into Russian-held territory. 
Russia's response to the Ukrainian invasion reflects a nation struggling to reconcile its ambitions with reality on the ground. The capture of a major military asset by Ukrainian forces is not just a tactical victory, but a symbolic blow to Russia's perceived military might. As the conflict continues, the Russian government's ability to maintain control over the narrative will be increasingly tested, especially if Ukraine continues to make gains that challenge the Kremlin's authority. The situation, of course, remains fluid, and while it's difficult to predict the exact outcomes, it's clear that both Russia and Ukraine are at critical junctures. And, of course, there are um, sites on the internet which are discussing whether or not Russia is going to be tempted to use tactical nuclear weapons or to use bigger bombs to attack Ukraine. But it can't do it in the Kursk region without the fear of the um, consequences for Russia itself. It can't do it near the border, because uh, certainly not with tactical nuclear weapons, because of the possibility of the fallout being blown back into Russia. So the, um, the, the idea of a battlefield nuclear weapon being used at this juncture seems, I, I think, remote, though terrifyingly possible, particularly given the fact that the Russian command is shattered, partly because, as I've been putting out many, many, many times, Putin is dead, and partly because the high command of Russia is completely chaotic. Now, I, I predict, this is my prediction, that if Russia is really struggling, it might wheel out the death of Putin to command sympathy and effectively call for a pause or even use it as an excuse to call a halt to the war and change the direction. Or indeed, to ramp things up. All manner of possibilities are there. But I think there's a very real possibility that we could hear of Putin's death in the next few weeks, officially. But as we know, Putin died in October. Um, for Russia, the challenge is now to adapt its strategy and its public communication to reflect the reality of the battlefield or to find some overarching plan that will eclipse that humiliation. Meanwhile, Ukraine needs to consolidate its gains and prepare for potential escalation in the conflict, or to use these gains to trigger serious and meaningful peace talks.